Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode one of the new video series that I'm calling Intermediate Photoshop. Now, those of you that have watched my previous video series, Getting Started in Photoshop, this new video series could be considered a continuation of that series, although it's going to be slightly different. In Getting Started with Photoshop, each video built upon the previous video, so we were kind of learning in a very progressive way from video to video. This video series is going to be more one-offs. We're going to do a certain technique in one video and then maybe something completely different in the next video. But what we're going to be learning is still some important things that a photographer should know how to do in Photoshop. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create rain, how to make it look like an image has rain falling. Not only do I get asked this question quite a lot, but it is something that will teach you some important things that you should learn how to do in Photoshop for other applications that we'll be covering down the line someday. Now, without further ado, we're going to start right now. We have this image here of this woman. She has an umbrella, and you can see the wind's blowing, but there's really no rain there. So we're going to create some artificial rain. Now, it's a multi-step process, and you might want to take some notes as we go. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer above this layer and that's simple. You just go over here in the lower right hand side and you can see this little rectangle with the turned up corner. That's for new layer. Just click there and we have a new layer. Now we want to fill that layer with black and the most common way to do that is you go up here to edit, down to fill and then you could do a lot of different types of fills. We could do the foreground color, which is white. We don't want that. As you look at the color swatches, you'll see white is the foreground color, black is the background color. You could do background color, which would work. That's black. You also could go down right down here to black if you want and fill it with black and do that. Uh, we'll just do background color because I want to illustrate something. So we did that. Now we have it filled with black. Now there is a keyboard shortcut that I would encourage you to use because we often will fill empty layers with either black or white. And the way to do that is your color swatches over here, make sure that you have the default black and white color swatches. If they're not already there, if you hit the D key, D for default, it will bring up the black and white. Now, it doesn't matter which is the foreground color and which is the background color. Just remember this. If you want to fill the layer with the foreground color, hold in the Alt or Option key. That, of course, is Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. And while that's held in, hit the Delete key. And you'll fill the layer with that foreground color. If you want to fill the layer with the background color, which in this case is black, you would hold the Command or Control key in. That's Command if you have a Mac, Control if you have a PC. Hold that and then hit Delete and now we filled it with black and that's a lot faster than going up to the edit menu and opening up the fill dialog box. All right, now that we did that, do that, we're going to add noise to the layer. Now what I would encourage you to do is I would create a smart layer with this layer, meaning a smart object. And because it the reason being, I guess I should say, is that with a smart object as you learned in my previous video series, Getting Started in Photoshop, a smart object will allow you to go back in and edit your filters to make some changes to them. And we'll I'll explain that a little more as we get into it. But we're going to create this, uh, this layer. We're going to turn it into a smart object. And if you watched that previous video series, you know you just have to right click on the layer and then go down to convert to smart object. And now you can see it's a smart object. It has that little indication with that square in the corner. Now we're going to add some noise to it. So we're going to go up to filter and then down to noise and then to add noise. Now we want 100% noise. We want Gaussian distribution and monochromatic. And just click OK. Now the reason why I asked you to do or to create a smart object is because then we could come back in here and edit this if we wanted to just by clicking on the add noise we could come back in here and edit this but we don't need to right now but for the next step you may need to what we're gonna do now is we're gonna blur the noise and we're gonna use a motion blur so we're gonna go up to filter 
then down to blur, and then down to motion blur. Now, when we do this motion blur, we have the preview uh, little checkbox check so we could see what it looks like. And it will give you an idea of what the blur looks like. So what you're trying to do now, we're creating rain. So you want to make sure that it looks like it's long enough for rain. And some of the complaints I get from people that have followed other tutorials on how to do this on YouTube, they say they do the numbers exactly like the person presenting it says to do it, and it doesn't look right. It doesn't look like they made it look. And the reason for that is because really, I can't tell you the exact numbers to plug in here because it's different for every image. The resolution of your image counts. So if you have an image that's only 100 or 1080 pixels wide, the distance will be less than that of an image that might be, let's say, um, 5,070 pixels wide. So that will vary. So what you really need to do is look at the the motion blur we're adding and see if it will look like it could become rain that looks like you want it to look for your specific image. Now the angle we have to take into account the actual way the wind might be blowing and if you remember right uh, correctly on my model the wind was blowing to our left over her right shoulder so we need to change the angle so that it's coming more like this more diagonally like that this so that helps so then you would just mess around with the distance blur until you get it to you think it might look proper now one thing you'll find is the edges here don't seem to blur like similar in a similar way to the rest of the image that's just the way it works and we're gonna have to deal with that uh, we might have to crop the image down to to make it look proper when we're done and you'll see when we get there so I'm gonna leave it about like this at 54 pixels and we're gonna click OK now you can see our smart filter here on our our smart object we have add noise and add motion blur and that's why I wanted you to do this smart object again we could just double click on that and come in here and re-edit this down the line if we don't think it looks correct alright so we did that motion blur now we're going to add a Gaussian blur because the rain isn't going to be perfectly focused. It's going to be a little blurry. So we're going to add a Gaussian blur. So we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And this too will depend on the resolution of your image. So you got to go a little bit by feel and having that smart object helps because we could come back in here and readjust this. So I'm going to do this just at half a pixel for this. Like that. We're going to click OK. Now once we've done that we just have to change the blend mode of this smart object so it blends with the background layer to make it look like it's rain and to do that just make sure you're on that smart object layer right there go to this drop down and we're gonna go down to soft light and now you can see we have this rain now, it might not look that great right now but we're gonna play with it a little and we'll make it look hopefully a little better now when you do, if you were really out here taking a picture and it was raining this hard, not all the rain's going to be in focus like this. Uh, you know, there's rain right by your camera and there's rain behind your, your subject and rain right on your subject. So it won't necessarily look as totally focused as this. So we're going to add another layer of rain on top of this. So we're going to go down here to the new layer icon right there. And we're going to click there. And again, we're going to fill this in with black. And since black is our background color, I'm going to do it by holding my command key in and hitting the delete key. If you had a PC, you'd hold the control key in and hit the delete key. And then we filled it with black. And again, we're going to go to filter and we're going to go to noise and we're going to add noise. And again, it's going to be 100% Gaussian distribution monochromatic. And we're going to click okay now um, you could make this a smart object at any point uh, so right now I'll just make it a smart object I'll right click I'll go down here to convert to smart object and you could see it's a smart object the thing was though the reason why I showed you now is that noise I can't readjust because I did it after so make sure you do the smart object before your most critical point now we're probably not going to be adjusting our noise 
we are probably going to adjust our motion blur and maybe our Gaussian blur. So that is why it's important to do that smart object before your most critical adjustment that you think you might have to readjust. So now we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And for this one, I'm going to leave probably the settings about the same. Maybe we'll just change the angle a little bit. I mean, rain doesn't necessarily always come down you know, exactly diagonal perfectly. It's going to be a little bit more scattered. So I'll change that. And then we're going to do the Gaussian Blur again. So we're going to go to Filter, Blur, and we're going to go to Gaussian Blur. And this one, maybe I'll do a, an entire pixel on this one. So we're going to make that a little more blurry than the previous one. So we have that. And now we have to change the, the blend mode. But before we do that, if you remember on our previous layer, see how this rain looks like it's all over the place. And I think this one, I don't want it to be as thick as that. I want it to be more sparse, meaning these drops might have been finer drops and they're going more diagonal. And the other one might be thicker drops and they're going a little more uh, vertically. That's why I changed that angle a little bit. And I don't think it should be as full as this. There should be less of those. So what I'm going to do with this layer is I'm going to add levels to it. Now you could add a levels adjustment layer, which is right here in the adjustments. Or if you do that, it'll be a layer on top of this layer. But I think what would be better is if we just add levels right to the existing smart object. So we're going to go up here to Image, Adjustment, Levels. And we have the same control here. It's just going to uh, be right part of our smart object now. So we won't have to add an have another layer there, if that made any sense. So what we're going to do is right here is these three boxes here, specifically the first two. What we're going to do is we're going to change this number to something usually between, I'd say, 60 and 90. So I'm going to do 80. And you can see when I do that, it kind of gets rid of a lot of that um, rain. It's, it's just changing the threshold of where the white pops through. And this one, as I move this center one, if I put it down, it's going to make it not as white. It's going to make it less bright. So usually this one would be between 0.9 and 1. So just for the sake of argument, let's like do 0.93. All right, so it's not quite as bright, and there's less of it now because we changed this to 80. Now, again, if I change that, let's say, to 60, it's got more. If I change it to 90, it's even less. So this is where the smart object comes in. You could come in here and readjust this later, kind of fine-tune it to your image. So we're going to leave it at 80.93. We're not worrying about that N1 at all, and we're just going to click OK. Now we do our blend mode. Now remember our previous layer, we did a blend mode of soft light. That's because we we're blending that smart object layer with the actual background. Now we're blending this smart object with that smart object. So soft light won't look right. I'm going to just show you to you know, and see how it's all darker now. It's because we're not actually blending this layer with the actual background layer. We're blending it with the layer above it. So we need a different blend mode. And that blend mode will be screen. So we're going to change it to screen. And you can see how it blended much better now. So that makes it look a little more realistic. We have a lot of rain going kind of diagonally. And we have some more, like, thicker, blurrier drops going in a little bit more downward, uh, more vertical uh, way. Now we could change the um, opacity of this layer if it's just a little bit too full for you. Just where it says opacity here, you could click there and there's a slider. And you could change the opacity of the layer. See, at zero, we don't see it at all. And then we could just shake it so it just maybe comes in there a little bit and adds at 86% I think looks good. So there's before that layer, there's after that layer, and there's before that layer. So if you don't, maybe you just like the one and not the other, I don't know. So try it. 
And here, of course, is our original image without any rain at all. There's with our first layer of rain and our second layer of rain. Now, remember when we did that motion blur, it was the edges were a little more defined than the rest of the image. And you could see how specifically this bottom edge and that top edge seem to be a little bit brighter. Now, there's not a lot you could do for that except crop. So what I would do is probably just pull down there and pull up here, something like that, and just click this checkbox that you like it. And there's our finished image. There's a lot of rain falling. Now, again, if you, if you think that's way too much, well, you could come in here and you could readjust the angle by, um, by clicking on uh, the motion blur. And what it does, it, it warns you that it's, you know, going to not look right because you're, it's going to turn off the layer above it temporarily. So you could change the angle, you could change the distance, um, make it look thinner like that maybe. Click OK. Um, anything like that. So you could come in here and readjustment, readjust these. And that's the power of those, um, changing those normal layers into smart objects helps you come back in there and readjust it. So that's it for episode one. I know I was really wordy on that uh, this episode. I apologize for that. Halfway through, I realized I was probably talking too much. Um, but hopefully I get better as the episodes go on. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I'd like to remind you that all my videos are free. They're always going to be free. Uh, they're free because many people help me out. Um, there's going to be a link in the description below this video. Just click on that link and you can get different ways to help him, of helping me make better videos and to keep making uh, videos. And it really, not all of them improve, involve you paying money. A lot of them are ways you could help me where it won't cost you really one penny. So that's it. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. Again, I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.